I want to invite uh, people here in the audience, come to one of the microphones here and please join our conversation. Yes, we'll start right here. Hi, my question is for Bill Drayton and Sam Worthington. You've spoken about the incredible results that individuals can achieve and also the incredible change you can bring about through collaboration. How can a large global organization, uh, I work for the World Wildlife Fund, um, harness simultaneously both collaboration in over 100 countries with other NGOs, which is very consensus driven, and the skills and talents that individuals bring to the table for change? Tough I, I think one of the challenges our community is facing, and World Wildlife Fund is, is a member of interaction in this mix, is this movement of interest. Uh, the broad nonprofit community has not created the space for that to exist. And this is where I would agree with, with Bill, that there is this need uh, for the entrepreneurial spirit to create uh, more capacity. But I think that the, the heart of this uh, awakening of the American public and, and so forth um, is a realization has to be rooted in the fact that we as Americans don't develop people. People change themselves. So that ultimately, uh, the individual who's gone overseas and seen some world poverty will have to root their solutions in that. And where I encourage them to do is to link up with existing institutions that have expertise, like the World Wildlife Fund and others, um, as they are entrepreneurial, because within these larger institutions, as you know, there's quite a bit of entrepreneurial activity themselves. I can understand that the citizen sector is not only the people in the organization, but it's the movement out beyond. And you really have to think of every one of our efforts on both, at least both those dimensions. And to whatever degree WWF can challenge people, that they can see the problem, they can imagine the solution, and you create an environment that facilitates that, WWF will very quickly become the most effective environmental group on the planet. Anyone else? Let's go over here, uh, yes. Good evening. I teach international development at the School of Foreign Service. And I have a question for the whole panel about the role of universities. Georgetown obviously has proven that we are really, I think, very successful, outstanding entrepreneurial change makers by bringing a forum like that together. My question is very specific. Well, what kind of skills should we give our students, undergraduates and graduates, to be able to, to find and use the, the keys to global development? I'll start very simply which is to reinforce the idea that only through things that they truly are moved by and care about will they then find the ability to act further, to not come from the abstract, but to come from wherever their desire is. Can you trigger it as a teacher? I think by encouraging to support it, that it, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be abstract. It has to start, mm -hmm. I, I feel, in a selfish way. I think the universities have an incredible opportunity in Georgetown specifically. Uh, every student is a trust that the university has. Are you doing everything you can to make sure that that person has the social skills, empathy, teamwork, leadership, change making, which is different from knowledge transfer skills? And they have the self-confidence and they practice that. This is a big change. Uh, for the scholars, how can you be a good historian or sociologist or economist if you don't see the world as in the middle of this profound transformation? We've had 10,000 years of elites running everything, good elites, bad elites, but always elites. Now it's got to be an everyone a change maker world, and that's, that is the most important historical thing going on right now. You know, we need the intellectual intermediaries to help us see it. And to help us think more clearly. So universities have a hugely important role. There's a fundamental need for a student uh, to graduate who knows how to work across cultures. Uh, and that implies listening. Uh, that implies putting yourself and becoming a minority. Um, it is the world, we say, is one world, but it's a world of many, many cultures. And it's the skill set of being able to operate across cultures and including listening in that skill set 
that will ultimately lead to a better form of development than simply, I have a bright idea I want to bring to the world or impose upon the world? Uh, I would say there's probably not one answer, and it's not a one-size-fits-all situation. Um, and what Georgetown and, and other uh, great universities do is certainly, in terms of those who are going to be strategists and analysts and policy experts and so on and so forth, I think it doesn't get better. Um, for the students who want to do the save the children kind of work, um, I, I think it's, a, it's, it's a, almost a different kind of education. We had a group of students and the, the dean of the uh, program in uh, peacekeeping and humanitarian assistance at the US Military Academy at West Point come down and and then kind of say how you know how does it all work and what kinds of capacities and they they are you know looking at developing a whole series of capacities not only the intellectual capacities but courage and teamwork and self-confidence and so on that a graduate school in international public policy um, is obviously currently not looking at but for for young people who want uh, that kind of career, um, there aren't many options available um, in terms of, I think, what, uh, what graduate schools work on. So this would not say don't, don't keep doing what you do so fabulously, um, but someone, I think, does need to be think, thinking about how, how do we uh, you know, also prepare the, uh, the, the graduate experts in kind of frontline humanitarian change and, and all the other things that we've been talking about here entrepreneurship and so on. It's a good question and being asked by coincidence, I was at a meeting of the advisory council at the Woodrow Wilson School at Princeton earlier this week and there was a serious discussion about a semester abroad requirement for people who are going to graduate from that undergraduate program. So maybe it's looking at what our requirements are at the academy as well. Let's go over here and then I'll come back up to this microphone. Yes. 